Right, we're back from France and we are looking at exhaust. So we have laid outside here loads of exhaust for our trusty Range Rover Sport L494. So we have fitted this deluxe, super, very nice SVR body kit. And we're looking at, we've taken the exhaust off because we've got to work out how to get the twin pipe. So we're gonna have a little look at that and look at that in this video. The other reason we've taken the exhaust off is, come on, have a look at this. So our car was in a crash and they've done a hideous repair. So this is what the exhaust should look like from this section on. And a nice weld and a little tip here. But what, it, it's obviously so twisted. They've, they've like put this in and look at this classic welding or lack of welding um, there. Now, we have cut through because we wanted to see what's inside the exhaust. But not yet. So, right, so here's my noise gauge. This is what it should look like. This is the five litre supercharged petrol exhaust system. We wanted to know what's in those boxes. So, that's what we are going to fit on our car. But we need to, there's a couple of things we are going to have a look at. So, we did another video, but this is an SVR. So, this section here rah, sits like that. And you can see that this follows on from here. And the hang is here. And you can see that the exhausts, this has got twin exhaust. So we now need to cut this off and fit a twin exhaust. And I've got those and we'll have a look at those in a minute. So the supercharged one has this little flap and it opens and closes. I think you might be able to see it down in there. Doosh, doosh, doosh. You might have to look in the end there, Gary. See, I don't know if you can see the little butterfly down the Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, so we're not, we're, so that's what a real is, but most people, they're expensive and they're tricky to control and fit. So I think a lot of people are just gonna fit the body kit and, but most people aren't gonna have a petrol. So let's jump over my bent, look at this. Wow, look at, look at this little butchery going on here. Oh, right, oh, shut up, right. We've also gone out and bought a diesel exhaust. So you can see we've cut it up. We've been busy with the handle grinder today, haven't we, Gary? Mm -hmm. Right, now you'll notice that the tips on the diesel point down slightly, okay? So if I put these next to each other, or you can see, Gary will zoom back a bit and you'll see the two different, are they a lot different? They're slightly different, aren't they? This the one's angle. shorter and yeah, like you said, angled down. Down, but they've both got the support. So hold on, let me stand on this one, see if I can get that to, I don't want to bend it. But the key is this, this hanger here and here. Okay, so let's have a look at the exhaust tips. So, we have got these exhaust tips and obviously that would, they point down like that. And this would be the right hand one. I'm right there, aren't I, Gary? Because they slope yes. round that yes. way. And that's the hanger. So, so somehow we need to replace this with this one here. So we are going to have to cut this off. Now that hanger there, you can see, is part of the car. I don't want to get confused with that. So we're going to have to... And I guess then your option is either welding this on. I think that's going to be difficult to clamp on or bolt on. Hmm. So we're going to have to clamp that. But obviously you want to get this hanger in the same place and hopefully what we're going to test is if we get that hanger in the same place we'll tack this on and check that that all lines up right um i think it's going to be tricky to tack it on on the car um we'll probably have to take the bumper off again to get this on and try it um but that's that and let's have a look how it looks on the diesel then so again i think you've got the same deal you've got the thing there and the diameter looks about the same, doesn't it? Um, the problem, slight problem you've got, if you have a look around here, Gary, let, me, let me lift this up, is that where we want to cut it, if we want to cut this, this is welded under here. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to cut quite close to the, the silencer there, aren't we, to get that on. Grab that exhaust for me again, sorry. Filming and doing my errands for me. Right then. So that's going to have to, you see, we're gonna to have to cut right close to this. So we're not gonna leave ourselves any room for like clamping or sleeving. So I think I think it is gonna to have to be a weld job. Um, and you can see there where that one's pointing down and that one's gonna be pointing out more. Um, so right, so we will get on, we'll get our petrol exhaust, we'll slice it off. I'll also slice one of these diesel ones off and see if they are the same. So that at least you guys, whether you've got diesel or petrol, Hopefully we'll give you some some help in getting these exhaust tips fitted. Right, and it, oh yeah, let's have a look inside. Let's have a look inside. So 
Right. Oh. So I wanted to know, this is scrap now because it's all mashed and bent. So we wanted to have a look what's inside. So Gary's cut these open. So obviously the inlet, the exhaust gases come here. Now they can come straight out the end, it's open, or they can diffuse into here. But if they come out the end, they've then got to travel across here. If you get back there a bit, Gary, can you see that? They've then got to go through these three holes here, and then they've got to come out. And then they've got to find their way under the end of this tube, right at the bottom here, in all that water. Look, I'm getting dirty, look. And then they come through here, round here and out. So that's quite restricted. So Gary and I are pondering what we can do to our exhaust over there. Do we just open it up, maybe... And what do you reckon? We could cut that off there. Mm. That that might might um, do that. I don't know if I can be bothered yet or not. We'll have a look. Right, anyway. But then it travels down the exhaust. Well, now it's coming this way, but you see what I mean. Um, right. So some people say they've cut their middle box out. But I, I've felt all around here, there's no perforations in this tube. So those two tubes just go straight on. I'm, I'm a little bit baffled, but that's a funny word because it's not baffled. But there we go. Um, I'm baffled, the exhaust isn't. Um, so it looks like it's just a joiner where they've got the two, and it must have some. Um, also, there's no. Um, what's the word? What's, what's the word for this stuff here and here, Gary? Wadding. Wadding. That is a good word. Right. So, so that's there. So we thought, well, what's happening here? So we opened this one up and, and we had a little pull. So, so there's obviously some. I think the majority can go straight through because we stuck a broom handle. You can see up there. Let's, let me grab a broom handle. Right, so I grabbed our trusty workshop broom. So if, if you look up there, you can see I'm going up to the bend there, right? And let's, let's try and if I insert that. See? So all this is all the way straight through. You can. So this must just... Th there's no baffling in these two exhaust boxes, just a little expansion chamber with some wadding, and I guess the same under here, do you reckon, Gary? I'd say so. so. I'd say so, there's probably some holes in there. But I think that just, um, the other interesting thing, Gary and I were having a look on eBay at V8 exhaust for sale, and some of them have a sort of crisscross. They get to a point about here, and they sort of do a, a funny, um, so I was a bit surprised not to see that on this exhaust. I think it must help the tone of the exhaust if you mix them a little bit. Right, especially there. seeing as the F-Type yeah, has, has, has that the same cross. engine, same. the 5 liter supercharged, yeah. and it has a, and it, it's, it's an open cross, so the, the two mix, they come in and mix and sort of cross over. And I think that does something with the tone. Um, right, so we're going to get on, cut these off, and see if we can weld these and get these on the cut. Right, we've come in from the in, come in from the outside, and there we go. We cut off the tips virtually straight back to the thing. We'll offer up those other. We'll put the exhaust on actually first. We've taken the bumper off because it's a real pain. We did have a go at getting it in with the bumper on, but you can't do it. So we're going to get that offered up, um, and then get those those tips tacked on there just with a, a tack of weld, and then we'll offer it back up again and check it's all good. Right, we are gonna have a go at welding this tip on. A couple of things, if you're welding an exhaust on a car, come this way, come this way. I would recommend using one of these little battery savers because the stray voltage, so we've got that on the battery charging points. I guess ideally you should have it on the battery, but I think that will be okay. That will stop any stray electrical gremlins from upsetting things. Right. Now, on the petrol, we will cover the diesel in a minute. So on the petrol, we've worked out that this will fit on here. Almost, it almost stays on there. Did we do this a, mi a minute ago? Yeah. I've had lunch since we did the last video clip. Um, like that. And we've had a look and we think what we're going to do is we're going to put a spirit level across. Make sure you do this with your car parked on, on level ground with no jack under it or anything. So make sure your car's level when you do this. So I'm going to get that there. Now, I don't know if it's going to be level that way. I'm not so worried about, that's it, get it, get it pushed up and squirt. I'm going to have to watch that a bit, aren't we, Gary? Because we've got yeah. quite a bit of movement. Way that way. So we're going to get that as square as we can, which is going to be up a bit. Um, but again, we're going to just put one tack on. So I'm going to get it. There we go. All right. I'm gonna have to hold that there and get that. 
Yeah, right. that's right. That's it. Right. Do you want me to try and hold it there? Or? Right. It, should, it should stay there pretty much. It, we, couldn't, we couldn't get it off before, could we? No. Right, we'll, we'll get that held there and we'll have a little tack weld and we'll see, see how that looks. I just got one tack on that, um, and we'll check. We'll check that. Um, I'm just trying to work out what I can say to make it easier for you guys doing it. Um, but we'll have a look at that. We'll put the bumper on and we'll check that. I'm, I'm just trying to think, Gary. Could we put a, some? Could I put? I could put my mobile phone on and work out. I've got that angle app and yeah. tell exactly what angle that is. But let's see if it fits first, and then we'll we'll do the app and see if we can get the angle of the upsweep. Right, we've been lucky. First time we've pretty much got that spot on. So we're happy with the way it sits along the bottom. So that horizontal um, is definitely right. We'll take the bumper off now and, and measure the angle because we've got it on a dead flat floor in here. Um, but that's, that's... Now obviously, where you've tacked it at the top, you have got a little bit of movement. You can actually still move it up and down a little bit. Um, so at least by tacking it at the top rather than the side, you can tweak it and get it exactly how you want it. But we're going to take that off now. Um, we're quite happy with that. Um, it's right up against the... Um, yeah, that's it. If you have a look, it's just nice, isn't it? It mm. just follows the bumper. So we're really pleased with that. Um, they're, they're a good design and tip, those, aren't they? They've yeah. made it easy for us. Right, let's crack on. Right, so we're using Gary's tricky little mobile phone app here. And uh, if I rest that on the tip, it's about 10, 11 degrees. There you go, 10 degrees. So that's the level of upsweep. Should we see how good we did the other way with your with your yeah. phone? Oh, check that out. Yeah, we're, like the pros. we're like the pros. <laughs> right then. We're not really pros, don't believe that. Right, we'll get on and do the other side. We don't need to film that. And then we'll get the bumper back on. The other thing you got to remember to mount, we hadn't done earlier, we hadn't mounted that. That extra thing, which has just lifted it off where it was close at the bottom. So I think we're all good there. Right, let's crack on. Right, we have now got both sides on. That is the 10 degree little swoop up is confirmed. Horizontal that way. And that seems to fit in spot on. Now, it did mention that if you had the diesel, things are a little bit trickier. So, if you come here, let's have a little look. So... This is the diesel one upside down, and, and that was the tip that was on there. Now, when we look at it, the petro, the the tip is much, is bigger than this, so it, it rattles on. Um, so it's hard to locate it. You could just weld it on here, and you'd be you'd be sort of all right. Um, because because that's the that's the that's the petrol, and that's the diesel, and you can see there the difference in diameter between the two. So what we were thinking of making is making an adapter plate. We've drawn it actually. We'll get these made. And we'll make a little we'll make a little plate there that you can bolt onto the exhaust and it'll give you a little sleeve coming out that you can put the tip over. So we'll try and get those made. It's gonna take us a few weeks, but we've sketched that out and we'll get those made. And that should make it easier for you to fit the SVR tip on your three litre TDV6 diesel. Right, that's all good. I think we've covered all the exhaust stuff. We'll get on with that, and then we're ready to get up to the body shop now, aren't we, Gary? Get that painted. Yep. Excellent. Good luck with that.